This is the homework for lesson four. It's module six of third grade. Get your name on there first as usual so that uh, you won't forget it at the end. And pause it if you need time to write it down and keep up. Uh, it's a video, so you know it, a lot of this I'm going to kind of rush through when I'm drawing things and coloring things in and counting things. But the thing I'm not going to rush is reading the questions because the numbers are easy, the arithmetic is really easy, but you've got to read the questions really carefully to know that you're counting the right things and you're adding the right things together. If you don't do that, you're not you're not going to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. So that's where I'm going to slow down. Maria counts the coins in her piggy bank and records the results in the tally chart below. Use the tally marks to find the total number of each coin. All right, so first thing we're doing in this table is counting tally marks. And we're, tally marks are set up to count by units of five. But you can also look at this. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. You don't have to circle them like I did. But that's 60, 65, 68. Easier to count by tens than fives even, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 62. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55, 57. And here we got 10, 24. Use the tally chart to complete the bar graph below. The scale is given. Uh, one tip about making these bar graphs before you get going, I'm going to switch my marker to make it easier to color just for a second here. Uh, keep in mind that, that the columns, technically I guess this is a column chart, um, the columns are going to have to go right above where the category names are. And they should not, the columns should not touch each other. There should be there should be a, a, an empty column in between the ones that you color in for the graph. So we don't want them next to each other. It makes it harder to read. That's the most the mistake most often made by third graders when they're coloring in bar chart, uh, um, column charts like this. Uh, use the tally chart to complete the bar or bar graph below the scale is given. Okay, so pennies, there are 68 pennies. Now the thing is, let me zoom in here for the scale because I'm going to have to fit that in before we do anything. Now it looks like it's already set up for us that we're going to be counting by tens. So I'm going to work with that. So this is 20. And be careful where you write these in. This is a graph. It's all about how everything looks. So it's important to be careful about how you do this. The numbers go right on where the lines end. 30. So you have to get all the way up to this line to be 30. And then this one is 40. We don't want to be writing the numbers in the middle of the boxes like that because then I don't know if it's 50 up here or 50 down there or 50 in the middle. We want it right on the line so we know exactly where it is. Right? That's 50, 60, 70. And we don't have to go any higher than that because we don't have any numbers higher than that. All right. So. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can see the numbers and the graph at the same time. So for pennies, it's 68. So 68 on this scale, 68 is going to be just under 70. And think about this. So 68. Let me zoom in just so I can really show this particular one. For 68. And I'm not going to. After this, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna do this a lot faster. But the first one, I want to really give a good example of it. So 68. Here's where the pennies pennies are gonna be in this column here, right? 68 is gonna think about this where you put it. 65 would be right here, be exactly halfway between 60 and 70. 68 is gonna be a little bit closer to 70. It's not gonna be right under 70 because we would need space for 69 there, right? And this isn't 69, it's only 68. So that's how you just, it, it's all about just estimating and thinking, well, does that look like 68? Well, if it was a little bit more, it'd be 69. If it was a little bit less, it wouldn't be quite look like 68. So that's how you figure it out. It's just, that's just how you have to do it. 
All right, so that's 68, and I'm just going to color this in. Try to be careful. I'm being a little sloppy right here, but I'm going to have to use an eraser to clean this up a little bit, clean up the edges, because I mean, it's a graph, and it's all about how it looks. It's important to be to to have it come out looking looking good. All right, so here's my eraser. I'm just going to clean up this edge here. And that there just so it looks like a, a barn steps like a lumpy thing all right the nickel uh there's 62 of those so that's just going to be a little bit above 60 but more than 61 so like right about there is probably good it's definitely got to look like less than 68 The dime is 57, so that's going to be a little bit under 60, right about there. So it looks like it's more than 65. And it's, remember, this is not going to be perfect because this, we're just kind of estimating in between for the scale. And the quarter, that's 24, so that's going to be a little bit less than halfway between 20 and 30, right about there maybe or so little bit less than half something like that how many more pennies are there than dimes for this when you, this is a word problem so I mean the 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 picture for RDW for word problems is already it's the bar graph so you don't have to draw a picture for this but you do need to write your number sentence in your answer statement so the number sentence I'm gonna write pennies how many more pennies are there than dimes well pennies there's 68 and dimes is 57, so it's 68 minus 57. Now you can solve this however you like, but show your work. If you can do this mentally, you probably can because you don't have to do this. You don't have to uh, regroup it, but then it's really easy to show. Show it vertically. 8 minus 7 is 1, and 6 minus 5 is 1. So there it is. That's really easy to write down. So write it down. Um, how many more pennies are there? Are eleven more? Maria donates ten of each type of coin to charity. How many total coins does she have left? Show your work. All right, so this is this question. It looks it looks a lot easier. It reads a lot easier than it is. There's going to be some work involved here. We are going to have to add up. We have to know how many total coins there are, and then subtract what 10, 20, 30, why well, ten for each kind. So that's forty she donates. So she's going to donate forty. It's not how much money she's donating, which would be even more work, but it's just the total number of coins. So we have to know. The total number of coins minus the 40 that she donates, and that's going to tell us how many she has left. So it's going to be, uh, and this is, I would totally draw a tape diagram for this, except that I already have the picture so of the bar graph. So I, what I could do is subtract 10 from each kind of coin and add that, or I could do the total and subtract. So I'm going to do the total and subtract. And looking at these numbers, I can see... I'll start with the 68 and the 62 because I look at those ones place digits. I want to do those first. And actually, this would be something that would be really easy to do the arrow way. So let me show it the arrow way. 68. I know. Arrow way, sometimes you don't do it as much in third grade. But I'm looking at this and it, I'm seeing, you know, there's a way to make 10 right there. The 8 and the 2. The two 60s make it 120, and then that's another 10 with the 8 and the 2, so that's 130. That's just my mental process for doing that. And then I need the 57 and the 24. All right, let me do the 57 first. So that's 187. And then the 24, I'm going to do...
that's going to be um, the 21st, which will make it 207. And then the 4, 211. <clears throat> now looking at this, I can look at this backwards and say I could have added, instead of the, adding this 57, I could have just added 17 instead. I could have thought, of, I could have done that in the middle somehow. And looking back at it, I could just, I could do that. But it wouldn't make sense to write it down that way. Uh, so now working with what I have, I'm going to subtract 40 from this. And if you want to do it all at once, you can. Or you can do it 10 at a time if you want. But I'm looking at that, that's 21 tens, and I'm subtracting four tens. So that means I'm going to have 17 tens left, so it should be 171. Then that means Maria has... Hundred seventy one coins left. And there I did what I it said show your work and I did. And there's lots of other ways you can do it, right? You can do this vertically. You could easily stack up sixty eight plus sixty two plus fifty seven plus twenty four in, in one big vertical mess and add that all up. Uh do the ones first and then you know regroup into the tens and you could do all that and then you could do Vertical subtraction. I mean, there's lots and lots of ways that you don't have to use the arrow way to solve that. Ms. Hallman's class goes on a field trip to the planetarium with Mr. Fiore's class. The number of students in each class is shown in the picture graphs below. All right, and don't miss this. The key is each square is two students. Two students. And, uh, how many fewer boys are on the trip than girls? That's our first question. So I like to kind of label my numbers as I go so I can keep track of everything and make sure I know what I don't want to lose track of what the numbers are that I'm working with. So I'm going to kind of label things a little bit as I go. So boys, I have to figure out how many boys there are. Okay, so Hallman's class has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. I'm going to put a little H under there for Holman's class. Plus, uh, boys in Fiori's class, 1, 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And that's 27. Girls, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. In Holman's class, plus 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. In Fiori's class, and 17 plus 15 is 22. And so there's more fewer boys are on the trip than girls. Well, that doesn't make sense. I must have made a mistake here. Oh, it's 32, right? Because 17, you're right, that, this is 32, because 7 and 5 is 12, not 2. So that's 32. Let me fix that. Because I was looking at that, oh, wait a minute, there's supposed to be more girls. And you, know, you look at the graph and you can see it, so the picture can help you check a mistake like that. So just, you know, when you're looking at that, pay attention to the numbers as you're working it. So if you make a mental mistake like that, just take a second and look at it and like, wait a minute, that's, that, that can't be right. And then you go back and you realize, oh, it's really 32. All right. So um, we have to figure out 32 minus 27. And that is 5. Now, you could have done this probably just by looking at the graph. And, and crossing out. I mean, that's one way you could really do it. There are five fewer boys. And what I mean by that is that you're just looking at the difference between boys and girls. 
right? So you just want to look at the difference that's left. And then this half takes care of that half. And so the girls have these four more here. And then you could just say, well, you know, these are the same until you get to here. That's another one more girl. So here's two, there's four, and there's one more, five. That's what graphs are great for. That's why we have them. It costs $2 for each student to attend the field trip. How much money does it cost for all students to attend? So we have to figure out how many students is all students. 27 plus 32. And then we have to double it because it's $2 for each student. So 27, 32... 59 and you, you could probably look at those numbers and do that in your head uh, but please just take the time to write it down and show your work it doesn't take that much more time or effort to do it and it, it really is something you have to do so 59 and then I have to add to 59 plus 59 that's what I'm trying to solve for how much money it's gonna be or I could write 59 times 2 but I think most people don't know their 59s that well. And counting by two 59 times is going to be a wicked pain. So I'm just going to add them vertically. 18. And mentally, there's a better way to do it because you could really just double 60 and then subtract 2. That's another way to do it. You can do that mentally. 11. 118. And keep in mind that we're trying to find out the question is really about and the question is the question mark the sentence that ends with a question mark it starts with how much money so we're going to answer in dollars The cafeteria in the planetarium has nine tables with eight seats at each table. Counting students and teachers, how many empty seats should there be when the two classes eat lunch? All right. Uh, now there are 59 students. Be careful. It's not. There's not 118 students. That's how much the money that it costs for the field trip. There's 59 students. So 59 students plus the two teachers. So there's going to be 61. And since there's, we have nine tables with eight at each table, that's going to be, we could draw some tables and do that. Or we could eight. Eight, 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 eight. So we're counting by eights. Do we want to stop before we get to sixty? We can't have. Uh, we're gonna we have nine eights, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So those are all the tables. Nine tables with eight at each table. Uh, 61 is going to be, let's see, if we have, we count by eights, we've got 8, 16, 24, 32, and this is really kind of a division problem, but um, 32, 40, where I'm just going to stop when I get to a number that's higher than 61, 48. 56, 64, there we go. All right, so this 56, and then I need how many more seats? So these eight are going to be empty. And then this 64, right, we only need 61. So like from here, I can say from here to there is 61 people or seats and then this is going to be three here 
right? Three left over because that's because all the way to here is 64. So that's three more and then this eight more, that's 11. And I just write this three, that three plus this eight equals 11. There should be 11 people left over, 11 seats, ooh, 11 empty seats. And you don't have to use the method I used, but you are going to have to have this. You don't have to draw the picture, the tape diagram I used, there are other ways to do it. Uh, but you do have to have that to show that that's how you figured out how many people there should be. And you do have to have something like this to show how you figure out how many empty seats there are. So that's, that's the, you know, that's how I did it. You can use it. There's other ways to do it, but you are going to have to have some equations, right? You're going to have to have some equations. You're going to have to have an answer statement and you're going to have to show uh, how, how you did your work.